Turns you have 15 minutes left. Red is your five minute warning. And you see a skull and crossbones? We'll dedicate this episode to you. Send Dakota down there for 40 minutes, and she's gonna be fine. Crazy. Consciously or not, every now and then I land on absolute gold mines. Like with my Helliverse dissertation, the Chaos Theory, and my theory on Tokufukawa. Just unintentionally. The main thing these theories have in common is that they always start out as a simple idea. Then I go down rabbit holes and come to absolutely wild conclusions. And this is no exception. The day was like any other, then Total Drama came to mind, and one specific character. And that thought led me down a rabbit hole that led me to solve Total Drama. Perhaps the ideas were always there in my head, it's just that I didn't realize it. But now I do. And I basically promised a part two to my Ezekiel theory, so here it is. And without further ado, let's do this. Hello. Scarlet. She was the character who led me to the gold mine of answers. But who exactly is she? Well, she was one of the contestants of Total Drama Pakateo Island. For most of the season, she works as a sidekick to the wannabe supervillain Max, all the while building pent up rage. Then comes the episode Scarlet Fever where when the truth of the whole island being artificial and robotic comes out she quickly takes over and creates a hostage situation, threatening to blow up the whole island if she isn't given the prize money. This backfires as she is promptly eliminated alongside Max. But something is off about this, right? This girl threatens to blow up an entire island which would result in the deaths of the remaining contestants, yet all she gets is elimination. Nothing else. Yet when Duncan blows up Chris's mansion in All Stars, he gets taken to jail. So what is going on here? Why does Scarlet go unpunished? Speaking of which, Sugar is up next. Although quite not as extreme as Scarlet, Sugar still did quite the number of evil deeds, animal cruelty being only one example, yet she never gets punished. Amy also tries to kill her sister in the very first episode, yet it's hardly mentioned again. And, there's, and then there's even more, but you get the general idea. And leaving Pakatao Island for a second and heading into All Stars, we also have Mal, who attempts to harm Gwen in the semi-finals and commits several other crimes during his dominance over Mike's body. Yet nothing really comes from it in the end. Chris just lets everything happen and unfold. From Scarlet to Sugar to Amy to Mal and even more. Speaking of things not having consequences, we do move on from crimes for a second and go to physical pain. Because in terms of total drama, it's wildly inconsistent. 
We do get some elements of harm like Cody with the bear in Season 1, Sierra going bald and Dakota going over some major mutation. But then in World Tour we also get Alejandro being submerged in lava, yet he survives. I mean, Ezekiel can be excused since he is immortal based on my past theory. But what about Alejandro? He did, he did go through physical pain, but he should have died. Especially since Cody went through as much pain as he did with the bear. So what is going on? Then I remembered something else. Something else that's strange with the World Tour Finale. No matter which ending you watch, either the Heather or Alejandro ending, Heather is robbed of the prize. Whether it be a technicality that she threw the wrong dummy into the fire causing Alejandro to win, or she throws the right one in but Ezekiel throws himself and the money into the volcano. Either way, this ending makes sure Heather loses in the worst way possible. But why? And this isn't really the only time this happens. As you might remember, in the first season, both Gwen and Owen are given the chance to win more money in the next season in exchange for giving up the prize they just won. In the Owen wins timeline, which is pretty much the canon ending, he agrees immediately. But in Gwen's timeline, she refuses. But Chris actually mentions how it's in the contract that if a bigger prize is offered, the contestants must compete again. So Gwen isn't even given a choice. And these two never do win again. Owen's mom loses a bunch of money in the action, causing Owen to take a job as an agent of chaos in that season. He comes third in that season, but he's not going to be nearly as lucky moving forward. As he gets 8th in World Tour, doesn't compete in All-Stars, and 8th in the Redoculus race alongside Noah. And Gwen was done even dirtier. In action, all thanks to Trent, she gets 12, and right before the merge, she gets eliminated because of one big coincidence getting 9th, and then in All-Star, she's done dirty again getting 4th, and then we never hear from her again. And that's not even mentioning Heather, who in her words was robbed twice due to her experience in All-Stars. And then we have Beth in Total Drama Action, with her being one of the two winners alongside Duncan. And after the season ends, we hear that Beth and Lindsay get sent to jail for accidentally signaling the alarms on the Mona Lisa, and it's highly implied that Beth had to use her prize money to get them out. Either that or her parents sold the car their car. Then there's the fact that the Revenge of the Island cast is weirdly mostly doing okay despite being exposed to radiation. Only Dakota was greatly affected. Then when Chris is taken to jail, right around the end of Revenge of the Island, he gets brought back in All-Stars as the producers bailed him out. We're on them in a second, but we're missing the point. This is just more inconsistency with the whole punishment ordeal. Chris has done a lot of things, but out of everything to get him thrown into jail for her, it's just dealing with radiation. And also note how in his time in jail, we see him driving the other prisoners insane with his insanity. He's just creating fantasy total drama seasons in his head. He has to be on the show. It's like all he is. And speaking of more world punishment inconsistencies, we also get Duncan in All-Stars as previously mentioned. He blows up Chris's mansion to prove himself as a bad boy and gets taken to jail for it. I'm gonna keep hammering this in. Scarlet, who tries to blow up an entire island along with the people on it, only gets eliminated, but Duncan is taken to jail. Also, well, back to Heather for a second. She is the producer's pet. In fact, I do think the main reason she stayed for as long as she did in the original season was because the producers and Chris got involved. It's all for the drama, and Heather certainly delivered. Anyways, I find it strange that when she gets sent a video from her parents, the people behind filming the video kept in the parts where it was clear that while Heather was gone, her parents were moving her out without her knowledge. Which means the people behind the videos, Chris, the producers, everyone involved purposely showed Heather that. But why? 
Speaking of Chris and these producers, we also have these contracts they keep mentioned. Throughout the whole show, they keep mentioning these things. I wonder why. Then there's Mal again. There's something even stranger about him than his mostly unpunished crimes. There's the Harvest Moon and All-Stars that flips the food chain on its head, with the predators becoming prey and the other way around. Yet it brings out Mal from Mike. Also continuing with more All-Star stuff, there's Ezekiel and how he becomes the leader of the mutated animals on Boney Island, tying around to the whole pyramid thing that gave Ezekiel his immortality and feralness and DJ his animal curse. Then with all of these inconsistencies and mysteries in mind, something clicked. A lot of these mysteries and elements within Total Drama connect together. So I created an image to visualize this all, and here it is. Izzy, who I've neglected to mention to this point, connects to the military based on what we know about her. And don't worry, stuff on Izzy could come later, and Chef is in the military. Chris and Chef are obviously the iconic duo of the whole show. Chef is the run runner of the daycare in Total Dramarama, which seems to so far be its own anomaly to be discussed. Then Izzy also connects right to Mal, based on the fact that she was able to see right into Mike's soul, which based on how Mal is one of Mike's personalities, he's included in this image too. Then Mal connects to the Harvest Moon, which I've om also almost forgotten the detail that he says in line about how he's brought out by it that indicates he knows a great deal about it. And then based on how the Harvest Moon affects the animals and how they operate, it does connect to the pyramid that cursed Ezekiel and DJ, also bringing them into this. And then Ezekiel rules over the need to date animals, not just bringing them into this, but also Boney Island. And Chris connects to these, into these contracts and the producers, which we never see. Which all three connect right to Heather, based on how I think she's the producer's pet. Then the producers and Chris bring in the show in general, which ties right into Blainly, since right before she's eliminated in World Tour, she comments that she was originally meant to be the host of Total Drama. More on this later. Then there's the overall contestants as a whole that connect right to the show, and Ella will be discussed later. But it's not just the fact that they all connect like this, but they also all connect directly to three specific things. Chris McLean, the producers, and the contracts. Mike, Ezekiel, Izzy, DJ, and Mal were not just competing on the show Chris hosts, but were also under these contracts. And Heather not only was under the same contracts, but she was also as that direct tie to the producers. And Chris has we heirs to heights to the military, and not just with Chef working for him, but since he's able to host a challenge in Area 51. Blainly was originally meant to host the show, giving her ties to Chris and probably the producers as well. You get the idea. It's all literally there if you think about it. But if everyone does le really back to Chris, the contracts, and the producers, then the answers to everything must lie within them, right? So I thought about it. Then everything came together. What I'm about to say not only explains the illogical punishment system, but also the winner's bad luck and lack of any death. Here we go. The true nature of the show is that it's a never-ending cycle of misery. Chris and the producers are actively doing everything they can to not just ensure that the characters go through pain and misery while competing on the show, but outside it too. We see this with Heather being exposed to the truth that her parents are moving her out behind her back, but then once we get to the winners, who actively push through the pain and win, life screws them over. And it's on purpose. It's why they included that weirdly specific detail in the contracts that we learn about in Gwen in the Gwen Wins timeline. That the contestants have to keep coming back if the prize is ultimately greater than before. And that's just it. They are ensuring that life both inside the show and out goes so wrong, they have to keep coming back to get a shot at the prize to solve everything. Then the prize is taken away and it happens all over again. It's to keep them coming back. And Heather is ultimately done dirty in season 1 where Chris and the producers seemingly betray her, 
just so she gets angry enough to compete once more. And Chris and the producers do whatever they can to ensure the format stays the same. For us, the show about is about seeing these likable characters overcome everything the show throws at them while going through development. But in the world of total drama, the point of the show, it's all about pain and misery. And Chris makes that crystal clear in the All-Stars finale. That's it! This is the finale! It's about pain and betrayal! And pain! Not hugs and kissing! PAIN! Then we get to the more strange elements of the show. Ezekiel's immortality in Going Feral, the Harvest Moon in the Pyramid, the Aliens in Area 51, the characters going through endless pain yet never dying, and these contracts. With this, I think you might get where I'm going. Ladies and gentlemen, Total Drama is a literal and metaphorical hell. The contracts keep being pushed in our faces, making sure that we get it's like a selling, signing your soul away ordeal. But that's because it is. And this would mean one thing. Chris is the devil taking human form and the producers are his demons. Everything that happens on the show is being controlled by the literal devil and demons, explaining away why the contestants never die. It's because they won't let them, because torturing people who can't die sounds a lot more fun. This explains why Alejandro survived being submerged in lava but barely to compete once more in All Stars. And no, I'm not saying the contestants are already dead and sinners or whatever. What I'm saying is that the show takes place on Earth, and somehow the devil got out, took the form of Chris McLean, made in a show alongside demon producers to which he could torture mortals and have them not die. But is that all there is to it? No, because I think his goal with this show is to make the world more rotten, something the devil would certainly try to do, and it works out well. Because I think it's why people like Scarlet who commit serious crimes are let off scot-free. This explains that. It's because these extreme crimes are becoming normalized. It's all there. But then why would Duncan go to jail? It's because he messed with Chris directly by blowing up his mansion. Don't mess with the devil. And it's also probably why as the original seasons go on before the reboot, the cast kept getting more eccentric and wild. It's because of Chris and his influence. This also bleeds right into the reboot with Priya and her wild childhood, chasing his outright crimes that he calls content, and goddamn scary. <laughs> also with Owen being the same age that he was in the original season despite the season taking 12 years later, is also further helps the theory. They can't die. But then we get back to Blangley. She stated that she was originally meant to host the show, but declined. I think I have an explanation for it. The producers probably didn't want Chris to host the show because they knew Chris would most likely go too far, ending things before they could really get started. So they chose Blaney because she was a lot more tame and a bit more of a viable option if they wanted success. But she refused. Probably because she got wind of this in their plans to warp the minds of the world, which I might delve into her more later, leaving them with Chris to host the show. And this also goes to explain why Chris goes from tame at the start of the series to the devil right at the end when we get to Pocketdale Island. Also, just so happens to the season, we get to the whole Scarlet thing. And this explains why a lot of the time we hear the producers breathing down Chris's neck over what he does. Probably because they don't want to put a lot at risk. It's, it all just fits together. And this should be the end, but I'm missing something. There's something I've been neglecting to mention, but what was it? Oh. Oh! Now I remember. If there are devils and demons roaming the earth and making reality TV, certainly God would do something about this, right? And boy do I think they did. 
because there is a character in this show that is literally the anti-Chris in so many ways. So who is it? Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Ella. Ella is another contestant in Pocket Tail Island who's not as remembered as other contestants. But let me explain something to you. She is a parody of a Disney princess. They lean heavily into this by her design just being Snow White, which they include the stereotype of the princesses singing to the birds and being able to control animals. But that's where the first of many signs of something greater lies. She can control animals with her singing. We've already established how many supernatural forces control animals, from the Harvest Moon to the Pyramid. But then I realize something. It's not as simple as her being a Disney Princess parody, because we later learn in Scarlet Fever, the whole island, including the wildlife, are robotic that are being controlled by Chris. So Ella was able to take control over something owned by Chris with her singing. And that's where the truth lies. Chris doesn't hate her specifically for her singing. It's because with her singing, she can take oh, Chris's control away from him. And Chris wants all of the control he can get. He hates what he can't control. So much so that he tries to literally stop her as, she, as he bans her from singing. And if she does, she'd be eliminated. This backfires as Ella needs to save her team by singing and has eliminated the episode despite her team winning. Then comes the thing that ultimately confirms everything. Let me just play the clip. At least now, I am free to sing whenever I want, which is always. Huh? What the? I didn't okay a musical bit. Chris never gave the approval for a musical bit to play, yet an orchestra plays anyway as Ella sings right through her elimination. And during this, Chris tries to send in Chef to stop her, only to fail as the robotic animals help her out. But we're missing the point, that an actual orchestra played that Chris never set up. It was all Ella, consciously or not. And then that's when we also realize that during World Tour, he had direct control over when the musical numbers happened therefore having the power to cue the instrumentals. It's under Chris's control. But Ella being able to not just control the animals but also have a mysterious orchestra out of nowhere backing her singing up is out of Chris's control as he despises it. And it's also all reflected in their designs. As Chris is more rectangular and dark, Ella is more bright and rounded. So here's what I think is going on. Whoever God is created Ella to throw Chris off and anger him as a punishment for what he's been doing, and Ella more than succeeds. So, if Chris is the devil and Ella would be the Antichrist, that would make her a stand-in for Jesus. And now you get why I included her in the image figuring out the connections. And people, this was all just one brainstorming session. It's crazy. I saw the show with one brainstorming session. It's incredible. There are still some mysteries left to be discussed, such as Izzy, Chef, Blainly, and possibly more of Chris. So get ready for whenever those do come out. Also get ready for my next brainstorming session that leads me to another goal mine of answers. Anyways, have a lovely day, and until next time. Also, YouTube shadow goes to sorta stupid.